Transfigured on the Mount, O Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We pray that this episode is a blessing to you and will inspire you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us for worship or study at the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where visitors are always welcome. We'll be back in a few moments to share some more information about our ministry. In this morning's gospel, my brothers and sisters, we hear some very important clarification on how we are destined in a good way to experience God's love in heaven. Not that we believe in predestination. I don't want you to understand that, but what I want you to get from this morning's gospel is that how we experience heaven is going to be up to us. And this morning's gospel gives us a good understanding of how that could be possible. Because most of us are under the misunderstanding that whether we are in heaven or in hell is purely the decision of God. And it is a synergy, it is a working together, it is a cooperation between God and ourselves. So let's look at this morning's gospel and see where it takes us and see whether we are going to be in heaven or hell. We have two characters in the gospel. We have an unknown rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. Let's focus on the rich man for a moment. He was consumed, as you can see from the gospel, he was consumed by surrounding himself by all the pleasures of life. He had beautiful clothing. He had a beautiful home. He even had servants attending to him. He had the most delicious foods. And he had whatever he desired. And let's look at the other person, Lazarus. Lazarus had nothing. He had no food, he had no money, he had even sickness, it says. He was laying across the, the gateway to this rich man's palace. Now, interestingly, we don't know the name of the rich man. Some rich guy. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the beginning of why he was in hell. Because more than likely, he spent his entire life, as I wrote in the bulletin, making a name for himself. He was probably very well known amongst his peers. For the sake of this morning, let's just call him Rich Man A. We can't give him a name. Rich Man A, some rich guy who spent his entire life wanting to be known by everybody. Kaimenos, this poor guy. For 2,000 years, no one even knows his name now. Can you imagine what that must be doing to him? Because the gospel continues, it says that when Lazarus died, this poor man who had nothing, the angels came and brought him up to heaven. He was escorted by the angels. And we like to think, those of us who talk, you know, who have family who have died, that the angels come and take us to heaven. And the Lord says, the rich man died and was buried. That's it. No fanfare, no escort from the angels, as if he was just a nobody. And here he is suffering in heaven. Yes, he's in heaven, but he doesn't realize it. He's in the presence of God. But he is so consumed with himself, he can't see the beauty right in front of his eyes. And he sees Lazarus laying there, and he says, 
Father Abraham, send Lazarus to me to dip his finger in the water and just put a few drops on my tongue. He was so consumed with himself that he thought even in heaven he should have servants. Send Lazarus to me because you know, God, I'm the important one. And what does Abraham say? You had your good things in life, and now you suffer. Abraham, who had nothing, he is being comforted by God. The rich man so consumed, he couldn't even see the beauty in front of his face. He couldn't stand the fact that he couldn't be served by somebody else. My brothers and sisters, if we find ourselves in the state of the rich man, and it's not about wealth, but it's about his heart. If we find ourselves in the state of the rich man where we are so consumed with ourselves, if we are so preoccupied with surrounding ourselves with the comforts of life, when we get to God's presence, we're not going to be able to recognize the beauty right in front of our faces. And what is worse, he knew Lazarus' name, the rich man which means every day Lazarus laid across his doorstep and the rich man did nothing. Think about that for a moment. How many times do we know of someone else's suffering and we ignore it because we are consumed with ourselves? If we think about it, we can all identify at least one person right now that we know is suffering, and yet we get so consumed and we think it's good things. We make all these wonderful excuses. I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to go to work, I have to, do go to, the, I have to take care of my family, I have to do this. We get so consumed with ourselves that even though we know the person is suffering, we ignore them. What's going to happen when we get to heaven? And we see God comforting them and loving them. Our hearts are going to burn inside because we are going to have a very profound guilt and pain inside because we're going to realize we blew it and we lost the opportunity when we are alive to love others more than ourselves. And this is the third and I think very important thing to understand from this morning's gospel. It says that there's a great chasm between you and us, so you guys can't come to us and we cannot go to you. In the Western church, especially among the Protestant church, this is interpreted as two physical locations and a big canyon in between, as if there's heaven up here for the good people and hell down here for the bad people. But the church teaches something different that we all must take to heart. The church teaches my brothers and sisters that the chasm in this morning's gospel is the moment of death. Once we die, we cannot change sides in our hearts. We have until we die, we have only this life to get our hearts prepared to welcome and experience heaven as love. That's the great chasm, death. 
Once we die, we cannot change our hearts. Once we die, we cannot change our priorities. And that, my, I, I also believe, my brothers and sisters, is that fire that's going to burn within us, that regret. What was I waiting for? Why didn't I take care of other people more than myself? Why was I so self-consumed? And we will create our own hell. God doesn't have to do it to us, my brothers and sisters. We put ourselves in hell. And so the church gives us this life to, as I've said before, to tune our hearts to hear God's love. A life of prayer and fasting and reading the scriptures and reading the holy fathers and mothers of the church and coming for holy confession and being prepared, now get this, being prepared every Sunday to receive holy communion. This, my brothers and sisters, is how we can prepare ourselves to experience God's love as heaven instead of hell. So my challenge to you, as the Lord himself says, he who desires to follow me, let him take, deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Very important words from Jesus Christ. So our challenge this week and every week, but let's focus on this week. My challenge, my brothers and sisters, is very simple. Let's get over ourselves this week. And let's realize that we are not the center of attention. And that when God says, love others, that we can only do that when we give up our own self-absorption and our own selfishness. God says, if they didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not believe even if a man comes back from the dead. That, of course, was a sign. Many did not believe when Jesus came back to life. Many of our own friends and neighbors, and I would suggest even some family members, choose not to believe even though God has come back to life. But thankfully, God has given us this life to get it right. And so long as we're still on this side of the ground, then we still have a chance. We still have a chance to love others instead of ourselves. We still have a chance to experience God's love as heaven. Glory to God for all things.